Hello, my name is Jake. I'm a math tutor. This video is for people who are studying real analysis. It's going to be about the different completeness axioms for the real numbers. So what prompted me to make this video was I pulled up the Wikipedia page for completeness of the real numbers. Uh, this is something you should take a look at if you're studying real analysis for the first time, or if you're trying to teach it to yourself. This is a good place to read up on these things. There is uh, something missing from this Wikipedia article. There's no pictures, so that's what I'm going to add uh, in this video. So to be specific, the Wikipedia article has these seven different versions of completeness. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Each one of them has its own picture, so that's what this video is going to be. I'm going to go through each one and just draw the picture. All right, so axiom one is the least upper bound property. So one, least upper bounds. The picture looks like this. Here is the real line says, uh, every non-empty subset of real numbers having an upper bound must have a least upper bound. So what they're saying is, here is a non-empty subset of real numbers. If you've got this and you've got a bound, even if the bound is all the way over here, there has to be a better bound, a least upper bound. So for every non-empty subsets s of real numbers if that set is bounded by like a b b is the name of the real number that bounds it above then there has to be a least upper bound so something here all right moving on axiom two dedicand completeness So this axiom says that uh, every Dedekind cut of the real numbers is generated by a real number. I don't think they did a really good job explaining that, but the picture looks like this. A Dedekind cut is a way to cut the real line in half into a left half and a right half. And to say that Every Dedekind cut is generated by a real number means that there actually is some real number uh, kind of between these two halves. So there you go. That's the picture for Dedekind completeness. Three. Cauchy completeness. So this says every Cauchy sequence of real numbers converges. So a Cauchy sequence is a sequence that uh, bunches up around its tail. If you need the precise statement, you can always click through the Wikipedia link. So that's a nice picture, actually. So you see a Cauchy sequence is one uh, where no matter how small you want to make the tail end of the sequence, you can always go far enough out into the sequence and make sure that the rest of the sequence is, is that small. So then to say that every Cauchy sequence has a... Uh, to say that every Cauchy sequence converges is to say that you have this picture. So here is a Cauchy sequence. So I've drawn it. So it's getting more and more bunched up here. If you've got this picture, then the completeness axiom says that you have some point here that the sequence actually converges to. So the picture looks something like this. Given some sequence that's bouncing around and bunching up, there's uh, a limit point. There's a... Uh, the sequence actually does converge. It, say it like this. If you have a sequence that's bunching up around itself, 
then it's also bunching up around a limit point. So that's Cauchy completeness, and then we've got the nested interval property. So the axiom says, uh, the way it's written on Wikipedia, it says you have a sequence of closed intervals and uh, they are bounded closed intervals and they're nested. So uh, the first one contains the second one and contains the third one. On Wikipedia, they also have this part here that's uh, the length of the intervals goes to zero. So when, when you have all of that, then you also got uh, one point in the intersection. So I told you I would draw the picture, and I'm just reading to you. So let me draw the picture. Here is ooh, the first interval. It has endpoints A1 and B1. Here is a second interval. And I'm just putting dots to indicate that the intervals keep going. So here's the nth interval. So when you're in this situation, there's something here that's actually in all of these intervals. So there you go. That's the nested intervals version of completeness. Next, monotone convergence. Uh, so apparently someone in 2004 said that this should be called the fundamental axiom of analysis. So I don't think that's caught on. I've never heard it called that before checking this Wikipedia page, but, uh, I guess you can call it that if you want. This says that if you have a non-decreasing bounded sequence of real numbers, then that sequence converges. So it's kind of like Cauchy completeness. If you have a Cauchy sequence that converges, this says if you have a, a monotone uh, non-decreasing sequence that's bounded, then it converges. So the picture is like this. Here's a monotone non-decreasing sequence. And it's bounded, so it's never going to cross this point. It says if you have this situation, then it has to actually converge. So whatever is happening here, it's converging. There's some limit. Number six, Bolzano Weierstrass. It says every bounded sequence of real numbers has a convergent subsequence. This one might be my favorite one. So a bounded sequence just looks like this. Uh, the only thing that makes it bounded is it's it doesn't get smaller than a certain point and it doesn't get bigger than a certain point. So the theorem says that uh, whenever you have a bounded sequence, there's some subsequence that converges. So, for example, like maybe this subsequence, there's some limit point here. So that is Bolzano Weierstrass. And then finally, the intermediate value theorem says that every continuous function that attains both negative and positive values has a root. So this is about functions. So I'm going to draw a graph. So it says if I've got a continuous function, if at some point it's negative, and then at another point it's positive, then it has to have a root, meaning it has to go through the x-axis. So it's impossible for this function to kind of skip over the x-axis. That's what the IVT is saying. All right, that is seven pictures for seven completeness axioms. Let me put them all up on the page at once. 
All right, the, the main thing to know about these axioms, if you're studying real analysis for the first time, is that they're all equivalent. Once you get comfortable with them, you can pick whichever one is the right one for the job, depending on what proof you are working on. Um, that might be all I want to say about the, complete, the completeness axioms for now. Um, but while you're still here, I want to let you know, if you are looking for a real analysis tutor, I tutor online and my contact info is going to be in the, the description for the video. So just get in touch with me if you're looking for any kind of online math tutoring. That's it. Take care. Bye.